Hello students, today we will be starting with sources of energy. As we have discussed that energy is the ability to do work, means the energy of any person decides the capability of doing his work. In this particular chapter, we will be discussing about that what are the sources of energy which we can utilize to have the various forms of energy. Means we are in search of some source which is a source of energy but it will be giving us another source of energy. In this, uh, in this category we have many sources and these sources are classified into two categories. So starting with those categories we will be studying about the types of sources of energy. These are categorized into two. First is renewable source of energy. and other is non-renewable source of energy. Renewable source of energy is a source of energy which can be renewed over a period of time. As its name itself suggests that renew. Renew means after getting exhaust one time it is replenished again without any human efforts. So renewable are those which renew over time and again means their exhaustibility is not fixed. They will be replenished again and again. But non-renewable sources of energy are those sources of energy which do not renew themselves means they have exhaustibility that there will be a time when these sources of energy will be exhausted. So this was the classification on the basis of their exhaustibility. But renewable sources of energy are those sources which are coming in new eras. Means they are not the sources of energy which are being used since ancient times. With the developing of science and technology these sources are developing and are most widely used while non-renewable are being used since ancient time. So these are the sources which an ancient man also know that how to make use of them but renewable are those sources which only science and technology knows that how to utilize them. So on the basis of, so on the basis of their usage on the time period these are again termed as conventional and non-conventional. Conventional means which are which has been using since ancient times as a convection. So non-renewable are also termed as non oh, sorry conventional sources of energy. And these renewable are also known as non-conventional because they have not been used since ancient time. Now if we talk of renewable sources we will be dealing with renewable sources. So in this renewable source of energy, our first source is sun and the energy is solar energy.
if we talk of solar energy it is the primary source of energy that all the living beings need if we talk of industrial part then to they require solar energy and if we talk of our daily life then to we need the solar energy so it is the most important and the primary source and the energy that we get from the sun is by the process of nuclear fusion means there is a combination of atoms to form a bigger atom and these reactions we will be discussing after some period of time here we will be discussing that what is the composition of solar energy which gives us heat and light both simultaneously in solar energy we have three types of rays first is ultraviolet rays which are also known as uv rays next we have visible rays and third that is last is infrared rays now we will be discussing about one one first we will discuss about uv rays uv rays is the important composition of the sun rays or the solar energy this is the invisible part of the energy means it is not visible to us so these are invisible rays due to their short wavelength they even don't reach to the earth as they don't reach to the earth so they are trapped by the ozone layer ozone layer is a layer which protect the human beings from uv rays because if the uv rays come to the earth or reaches to the earth they will be causing many severe skin diseases or skin problems so these are trapped by the ozone layer as these rays are very uh, very efficient as they cause many skin problems so due to their this property they are commonly used to kill bacteria in foods or in drinking water and they cause skin problems because they have ionization effect so due to that effect they cause many problems so this is how the uv rays behave now we will be discussing about visible rays in its previous composition we have discussed that these are invisible but its name only suggest that these are visible so it is a part of a sun ray which is visible to us as they are visible to us their wavelength should be longer than uv rays so their wavelength range is 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer this visible rays are consist of seven different wavelengths 
this is a range that uh, all the rays will be combining and lying in this range so this is a approximate range but in this visible rays there are seven different wavelength and each wavelength corresponds to different colors it implies that there are seven different colors which together constitute to form a visible rays so there are seven different colors that is web gear that constitute to form a visible ray now we will be discussing about its last composition that is infrared ray in the previous section we discussed that visible rays are visible to us means they are responsible for the light which we get from the solar energy but the heat content that we receive from this energy is due to this infrared rays so these are also known as the heat content but again they have a shorter wavelength so they lie or they are invisible to us for example if, as we take uh, if we dry clothes wet clothes in solar energy they dry up so the drying of wet clothes is only due to infrared rays and in the solar energy about 1/3 is infrared rays as they have heating effect so they are also used to get relief from body pains or body aches due to their heating effect so this was the composition of solar energy now there are many uses of this solar energy with increasing science and technology because the uses of this solar energy are being more pronounced nowadays rather than ancient time so its first use commonly used usable today is solar cooker solar cooker is a device which absorbs the solar energy and cooks the food but in comparison to lpgs it takes much longer time to cook the food second device solar water heaters solar water heaters are the device which uses solar energy to heat water other solar cells solar cells are the device which convert solar energy directly to electricity still they are not more used or their use is not more pronounced because they are very costly they are made up of the pure semiconducting material which is very costly and that material is silicon and the most common use of solar energy is drying of cloth we have constructed many devices which are used or which are based on solar energy but still every effect has advantage and disadvantage similarly these devices also have advantages and disadvantages so the advantages are foremost is that uh, energy is renewable so it won't be exhaustible if it is not exhaustible then they are they can be used over a long period of time due to being renewable the quantity available to us is unlimited so their usage is not restricted under some boundaries it does not cause any type of pollution because it is naturally occurring but every side every advantage is accompanied with disadvantage 
so it has advantage disadvantages also if we use these devices they can be used properly during day time but these cannot be used during night time due to unavailability of solar energy so during night time or during cloudy days during rainy season these devices are of no use and as we see that the sometimes solar energy received is too much and sometimes it's not too much so the rate at which the energy is available to us is also not constant it varies so the functioning of these devices also varies means they are not more efficient so this was the use of the solar energy and its composition